Hello, this is Mark Freilich and my partner Arnold DeComps, and we're here to present a fatigue analysis case study on the Liberty ships produced in the United States between 1941 and 1945 over the Second World War supply effort. It wasn't until the second year of production in 1942 when one of the Liberty ships off the coast of Oregon in sub-zero temperatures suddenly split in half that an effort was made to analyze and check for cracks in the Liberty ships. From that point on, there was always some level of inspection, but it's hard to find the cracks that are responsible for fatigue failure, as we know they can start to be as microscopic and hard to see with the naked eye. Eventually, 1,500 of the 2,700 Liberty ships were discovered to have cracks three of which became catastrophic. It's also fun to note that the meme Kilroy was here had origins in shipyard inspection. The consequence of failure for the Liberty ships was relatively high. Each ship carried well over 10,000 tons of emergency supplies crucial to the war effort. The loss of just one Liberty ship could mean the cutting off of the supply chain to Europe and may have drastic consequences not only in Europe but as well here in the United States. Each Liberty ship cost approximately $2 million to build at the time, or about $36 million in today's money. As previously mentioned, three of the Liberty ships failed catastrophically. The first, in 1942, the SS Schneideke, happened during the war effort, while the two others, the Pendleton and the Mercer, both went down at the on the same day, 10 years later, during a nor'easter off the coast of Maryland. The rescue of these crews inspired the Disney 2016 Disney movie, The Finest Hours. So how was the crack investigated and who was involved? On site, an investigation requested by the US Coast Guard showed that the fracture originated at a defective weld. A loading condition known as hogging occurred. This condition is due to an uneven distribution of weight, where the weight of the where more weight is located towards the end of the ship. This caused the end of the ship to dip compared to the center, resulting in tensile forces on the deck that in turn resulted on the cracks. How, however, the main cause of the failure was discovered by a woman named Constance Tipper. She was an engineering professor at Cambridge, and she found she found out that the steel used to make the ships uh, suffered from embrittlement, in which a material uh, transitions from ductile to brittle as the temperature decreases. To make this discovery, she developed what is known as the Tipper test, a test to determine the brittleness of a material at different temperatures. The cause of the failure. So many factors played a role here, and steel quality was one of them. Also, the low temperatures help the steel transitioning from ductile to brittle, a condition known as embrittlement, and this is a factor that designers just didn't consider. And finally, the quality of the welding. Many unexperienced workers performed the welding of these ships, and besides, these were the first all welded ships, so a good welding job was important. However, the quality of the welding was inferior than expected, and this caused the cracks to generate and propagate over long distances. So how is the failure fix? Uh, many modifications have been made to ships since then. Nowadays, ships are designed to yield instead of fracture. Uh, the ductile to brittle temperature was lowered by reducing the sulfur and phosphorus impurity contents of the steel. And they also made some design changes, uh, rounding off hatch corners, installing crack arresting devices, and finally an overall improvement in the welding practices. And it should be mentioned that this accident occurred during the World War II, when there was a severe shortage of input elements, and once the war ended and supply was normalized, the construction and quality of this ship increased. And was this uh, sufficient to prevent future failures? Yes, I would say it was sufficient since there hasn't been any report of ship failures due to embrittlement. It should be mentioned that this failure, the Liberty ship failures, uh, caused a significant progress in the study of fracture mechanics 
and it also helped us as a case study for the development of new ships. So design improvements. So it's hard to add an improvement since many advances have been made to ships since then. But one of the things that we would have done is reduce stress concentrators as much as possible. This is something they didn't do. And also we would apply the shape merging, shape merging principle for most of the joints between the deck and the hut. And we believe this will mitigate uh, stress concentrators as well. And here are our references.